Well, hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jason Levine, and thank you so much for joining me today on the Friday Masterclass, where we are shifting away from video today. Actually, we'll be doing some video in the form of Adobe Express Quick Actions, which is so great always to follow Katrina. So we're going to continue kind of the express train. That's a good one. Continue on some of the express topics, but um, we're actually going to cover something else today, which in theory, I've actually done it a few times now. You can use sort of in a video context for restoring frames and things like that if you want to do something a little bit more manual. But primarily, we're going to be talking about some of the incredible AI-powered neural filters in Photoshop. Now, again, this is really more image-based masterclass today, not so much video. But um, really, the reason for this is because, as I mentioned in previous streams, I've been doing, or I, ha I did, uh, a whole sort of photo collection restoration for my family almost a year ago now. And uh, initially, when I had that done, of course, it was just really scanning in hundreds and hundreds of images. And then they do some basic cleanup and things and put them into modern formats. Um, but a lot of the restoration, of course, you know, if they've got scratches and they're torn and everything else, they preserve them as they are. Well, I started to go through, particularly with some really old photos of my grandparents. I'm feeling nostalgic. It's the end of the year. You know, I don't know some of you get that way. I get that way. And uh, we've got these neural filters, and we've updated a lot of these neural filters. And to be honest, while I've used pretty much all of them, we constantly sort of update and refine them, particularly after Max. There have been a couple of those filters with regard to photo restoration uh, and, and, and colorization that have been vastly improved, and I just really hadn't had time to sort of dive into them. Now, the other interesting thing that I found in doing this experimentation is that you don't it doesn't have to be a photo from the 40s or 50s to really take advantage of some of this AI. And in fact, it can do wonders for images, even from just film cameras, color film from, you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago. <laughs> Not too many color film from 20 years ago, but maybe 30 and 40 years ago. Um, and then, you know, and beyond. So we're going to look at some of that today. Um, and then we're also going to take a look at one of the newer features um, that's available. Now, oddly enough, I don't even know how I stumbled upon this Adobe Lee, like a bit.ly, a quick link, um, which is leveraging character animator in Adobe Express. You might have seen either on uh, Facebook or Twitter or even TikTok that some people are using character animator characters, some of our animated Illustrator and Photoshop characters, putting their own voice in there and kind of creating these little, hi, I'm Jason videos. Um, just want to showcase that to you. I'll show you the URL. And in fact, here, I'll pull it up right now. So you can take uh, take an advanced look at that. That'll be the last thing we look at today. But if you go to adobe.ly 308CYEZ, uh, or is that an O? No, I think that's a zero. Well, you'll just have to experiment. I tried to make a, a tiny or a bitly from that, but it's already been made into a, a shortened LY, so I couldn't. Um, go to that link. I think that might be an O. 308CYEZ. And it'll take you directly to Adobe Character Animator in Express. Katrina, if you're still there, I couldn't find it from the Express homepage. So I don't know if it's still kind of hidden. It is sort of a beta-y thing that we're doing. Um, but it's really cool. It's fun. If you like fun stuff, you know, I, uh, I recommend that. So in any case, quick couple of quick hellos. So we've got Steve. We've got Annika, Oliver, Umicorn. Nice to see you. Carol Pearl, Robert, Theo Z. Z by oh, 3O and Z by HP. Always great to see you. All right. Thank you so much for joining today. All right. So let me go ahead and switch over to Photoshop. And uh, we're going to get started here because I, I have a whole bunch of images that I want to get through. And again, it's not just me sort of restoring pictures and blah, blah, blah. But it's just kind of showcasing some of the different things. And by the way, this is happening. Most of this stuff now is, um, or I should say, the ones that I'm showcasing here, I think, are now processing on device. So you're going to you're going to live through that processing with me on this particular machine. Now this is a 2017 iMac here. Um, it's still pretty quick. There's a little bit of wait time, and then sometimes there's a lot of trial and error to see if some of these filters are going to work or not. Um, I found a couple of images where some of them are great, some of them it didn't quite cut it, some of them need some work. I'll show you some of the manual things that you can do. Maybe throw out a couple of ideas that would improve some of these things if the engineers are listening. And uh, let's just get to it. Okay. So we're going to start here, good morning, Bobby Orlando, with an image of my grandmother from sometime in the 1940s. I don't know exactly when this is. Uh, I Again, this was an image that I had restored. It's actually an 8 by 10. 
I have loved this picture. I remember this picture as a kid. I think we had this in my like family living room or something. And she has an inscription on the bottom, which might be a little hard to see. It says, to the one I love above all, your wife, Helen. So this was to my, she, she had this taken from my grandfather, maybe while he was in the war, I don't know. Um, you know, these things weren't always dated. And by the time I was interested enough to care and to ask her about, hey, when was this shot? Uh, unfortunately, she, was, she had already passed. So um, I don't exactly know, but it's sometime in the 40s. All right, now you've probably seen Terry do some really incredible photo restorations in the past using manual techniques and masking and all kinds of things. And just on that, we have a whole new series of masking capabilities in Lightroom and Lightroom CC, Lightroom Classic and Lightroom CC, where you can, where AI will independently identify, you know, eyes, mouth, nose, face, skin, all of these things. And then you can treat them uh, independently, like as if they were their own indiv indiv individual masks with adjustment layers. Really awesome stuff. Today, we're just gonna focus solely on using neural filters in Photoshop. So let's start. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is go up to the filter menu up at the top. And if you've not gone here before, you'll see right down there, neural filters. So let's go ahead and choose that. And it's gonna pull open the neural filter panel. Now, just real quickly here, there's a whole bunch of things. And again, we're constantly developing different filters for inclusion into this panel here. So you'll notice with some of them, there are little uh, little download icons. Oh, that we must have just updated skin smoothing because I've used that this week and apparently that's to be downloaded. Now, we're not gonna do any of that because that's really great. Skin smoothing is sort of like, yeah, yeah. well, you can see the sort of example here if you have blemishes and such. I would typically use that on more modern images. Some of these softer film-like images, I don't wanna use skin smoothing. Anyway, but you download them uh, in order to use the makeup transfer, landscape, style transfer, harmonize. This is another one which uh, came out around max color transfer. And then I've already downloaded a bunch of the other ones here. Colorize uh, uh, and the new photo restoration, JPEG artifact removal, super zoom. We're going to get to this one too. All right. So first thing I'm going to do here is now just a case in point with regard to super zoom. Uh, this is particularly useful if, again, like a lot of these images, in fact, a few that we'll see right after this, were 60s photos, some like strange like 4x6 or 4x5, or some of them were like wallet size. Anybody who's of a certain age will remember, you know, when you got family photos or you got photos taken of you and your siblings at the mall, you could always choose wallets. I guess they still do that in schools. I'm thinking my own kids now. Yeah, I guess we still can get like wallet size photos. Yeah. I don't know, you know, probably not common knowledge to most people today, but so some of these images are really tiny. So we're gonna get to super zoom in a minute. It's great for upscaling and then it also has some control around that. Okay, so let's just start by default by turning on photo restoration. And inside here, by the way, I'm gonna just drop this down to 50%, start with around 50, 50. There are three basic parameters, okay? Photo enhancement, enhanced face, and scratch reduction. All right, now, wow, that actually happened a lot faster than I was anticipating. So right away, holy cannolis, um, here's our before. Okay, and I can zoom in a bit here. And here's the after. All right, and it, you can see like immediately with the uh, enhanced face option there, it really brought back a lot of sharpness to the eyes. Um, it's, it's phenomenal. Now. One of the things I want to do here is sort of point out what these different controls do. Now, of course, we've also got scratch reduction. We'll get there in a second. So first and foremost, photo enhancement. This basically adds more contrast and sort of a little bit more shadow, shadow contrast detail to the photo. So, you know, if we bring this down, let's go down to like nine, and you can see it's processing on device. It kind of brings back that softer, uh, lower contrast sort of look. Now, if we're trying to go for you know, a slightly more authentic look compared to the two, you know, maybe we go there. I sometimes want to give it a little bit more of a modernized, stylized look. I like it, you know, and hey, you're, you're playing around. Now, similarly, if you take this all the way up to, uh, to 11, to 100, now that's actually quite dramatic. It actually looks pretty, actually looks pretty good. I kind of like that now that I, <laughs> now that I did that. So here's our before again. 
Here's our after. That might be a little bit extreme. So I'm going to take it back down to around, let's go to like 55-ish, okay? Now, similarly with enhanced face, and I'm sure there's few watching right now who are already going, okay, well, her eyes, in, in sort of an effort to create that sharpness, it was kind of a soft focus. I mean, there's like great lash detail, but they almost look slightly painted. Well, yes, that is sort of the, the artifact of enhanced face. Now, again, it started at 50%. We can take it down to around 20. You can see that those areas still, they're, they're just a little bit softer. If we take it, you know, I like to sort of push it to the extreme. Now, in and of itself, that sort of looks cool. And actually, it looks great minimized on my streaming computer screen here. But obviously, that now looks just very, very fake and very, very retouched. So that that's just a bit extreme. So again, you know, this is one of those things with, depending upon the source image, depending upon the, the sharpness of the original, this is going to have different, uh, different effects. It'll affect your image differently. <laughs> Easy for me to say. So again, kind of play around with this. Now, let's get into scratch reduction here. So obviously, we've got some serious scratches along the top, along the edges, along the side. So let's just try, let's just do like 25% process on device. Now, typically with some of these longer processes, it'll start counting down. So you can see we've got our little progress bar here, the percentage and the seconds. Keeping it real, I don't always tell you to follow the seconds there, you know? All right. And there we go. Pretty amazing. Now, it didn't catch this one little, little piece up there. I mean, that's okay. We can fix that with content aware. However, it did seem to kind of color mute some of the top of her hair there. So maybe we need a little bit less. So this is one that I found as I've been playing around with this, with scratch reduction. Again, it's using AI to identify, well, what, what, what isn't supposed to be there? So obviously, like nice, elongated, horizontal scratches, it usually does a pretty good job of removing those, even at lower scratch reduction levels. So what you have to sort of look out for when you're using this is, how does it affect other things? So here we are. This is at like at 10% versus 9, okay? And look, it basically did the same thing. But it just brought back a little bit more. Obviously, again, the original photo, this was this was in one of those like 1940s sort of uh, uh, um, paper bound frames. And based on how this was shot, I mean, it already had kind of this soft vignette around it. So again, we weren't, weren't that detail at the top here wasn't there to begin with. But it basically got rid of, you know, 85, 90% of the scratch with sort of very minimal artifacting here, okay? So I'm actually really happy with that. Now there's some additional adjustments in here as well that you can um, that you can leverage. So noise reduction. Now again, often I've found that especially once you start adding photo enhancement, that is doing some kind of AI-based no uh, DNR, digital noise reduction. So I've not yet found a, a reason to use this here. Uh, there have been maybe one or two color ones that I've worked with where that's been useful. Um, color noise reduction, yes. Again, not here. Now, that one, I will say, if you use the color noise reduction in uh, Camera Raw or um, uh, directly in Lightroom, color noise reduction tends to be, it, it, usually you have to, you, you want to go around, you know, depending upon the severity, but usually it's sort of 25 to 35% kind of knocks it out. And then it just, it seems to very carefully mute what would otherwise be color noise. This one, as I'll show you in a little bit, is actually quite aggressive. So as with many things, less is more. And as we just saw, even with scratch reduction, sometimes you, you, you assume you need to go a lot harder, less can actually be more. And, and with, you know, with minimal or less or even no artifacting to some degree. And then you have halftone artifacts reduction, not a problem here. And then JPEG artifacts reduction. Again, now this was scanned in as JPEG, but there weren't really any of those traditional kind of JPEG blocking artifacts because this was a massive image scanned on a very good scanner at, you know, high bit depth. So we didn't have those problems. We don't have to use that. That too, if you start using this JPEG's artifact reduction where it's not necessary, maybe obvious to some, not to all, it's, it's going to soften the overall image, right? You're going to lose some of that detail that 
the enhancements are bringing back in there, okay? So again, just a quick before, here's where we started, here's where we are, okay. Now, I just wanted to add one more thing to this, which was colorize. Now we've had colorize in neural filters uh, for a little while, and actually the example that it pulls up here when you hover over it, kind of gives you a good example of what it, uh, oh, it just went away, what it sort of used to look like. I don't know if it's gonna go, yeah, it's gonna go away. Again, sort of that, you know, if you've seen colorized film and stuff, you know, it kind of has that sort of minimal, minimized color palette. It doesn't really look real. Like that's, it's interesting that we're using that, but I, I think that's good. Don't, don't promise too much, right? Okay, now I've run this twice. The, the results have not been exactly the same. Let's see how this does by turning this on, all right? First of all, that happened way too quickly. It didn't even give me a chance to drink water. Second of all, what? Huh? Like, holy. And I have to tell you, because again, um, you're just not gonna get it in that source image. My grandmother's hair was sort of an auburn, brownish sort of red at heart. I don't really know because there's no color photos of her from the 40s and when she was my my grandmother in the 70s, 80s, I know she colored her hair and she kind of went red. So I don't know her exact color, but it was kind of a dark brownish auburny kind of thing. So it it got that. It got that. And her eyes were hazily green. And it got that. Unbelievable. Now, again, some of this down here, this is kind of, you know, sort of, again, it's, I think the AI is using probably, you know, from, you know, as it's in its learning model, looking at photos, again, it kind of understands based on, I'm sure there were models with the same kind of printing process. It introduced a little of that sort of color, <laughs> color wash, you know, uh, processing, um, artifacting in color, but I love it. Actually, it, it provides some really cool contrast. And I don't know, I, first of all, my grandmother was a beautiful woman. I mean, I thought she was beautiful as an older woman, but wow, she was beautiful when she was young. So that's it. Now, again, we can do more to this. We can refine it more. I wanna point out here that when you do this, what's really cool is that you can just sort of output this to a new layer, new layer masked, smart filter applied, a totally new document, or you can just basically, um, you know, destructively on top of the current layer. So, you know, if you were to do new layer, all right, and okay that, then you can always toggle between the original. This is also useful. We're gonna come back to this uh, towards the end. Wow, time is flying. Because sometimes when you do this, as you'll see later in a color image, when I did the colorize, it really kind of went, went a bit far out. Now you can make adjustments. I'll show you that too. But uh, anyway, we'll get to that. So having it on its own layer is actually really, really useful. And again, if I were to sort of flatten this, this came from a Lightroom catalog. So I make the save, save it back to Lightroom. It creates a new file anyway. You can see it was opened in here as a TIFF. So, um, you know, we'll have the original always to go back to, but super cool, super useful. Okay. Graham Graham was a baddie, says Andy A. Yeah, she was. She, by the way, she was a B A. Mofo. She was amazing. She was she was a New Yorker, took no garbage from anybody. She was amazing. And she was really probably my one of my biggest inspirations ever. Um, okay. All right. Yeah, the detail in the earring, Uma Korn was saying. Yeah, I know that's that's the thing. Like, you know, and again, it's kind of if you look here, it, it's a little artifacted around her earlobe there. We could probably smooth a bit some of that out, you know. But it's like just like shocking, shockingly good. Okay, so that was the 1940s. Now let's go to the 1960s, where now I'm using a picture of my mom. <laughs> so this is my mom in the 1960s, and this was this is a good example because as you can see here, we're at 100%. So this was just a, a small format image. So I'm just going to kind of zoom it up so we can see it better. Now I'm going to use super zoom on this first. And one of the things that, again, just in doing this a, a couple, a bunch of times, when you use super zoom, 
while you'll see quality wise what it does when you apply it, if you don't zoom up before you go into the neural panel, it doesn't like it doesn't zoom the picture on screen for you. So just a just a sort of, you know, best operation here. Zoom up in this case, you can see I'm at like at 264% on screen before you start doing anything. All right. Umicorn, you can see where I got my looks from. Oh, thank you very much. I mean, I got to say, you know, good stock. My mom was in fact a model in the 60s. I will sneak a photo for you all later because I appreciate you. So you're getting very personal with me today. Um, so let's go into neural filters. Okay. So as mentioned, first thing we're going to do here, and I recommend this. Now, by the way, people have asked, and I've, I've, I've been on a couple of Terry streams where he's talked about this. So this is the new super zoom feature. We actually brought this into, we brought this into camera raw, right? Some time ago. Um, and people are like, well, how does this differ from just doing the image resize? preserve details with just directly within Photoshop in the edit menu. Um, you just have a little bit more, some slightly different, more controls. It just works a little bit differently. And again, um, I, mean, I think the general super zoom that was in camera before is the same, but doing the, uh, the resizing via the edit menu command versus here, you just, you'll see, there's just a couple of slightly different things that you can do. Um, maybe they're exactly the same now. I don't know. I haven't gone into that one in a while. They were previously a little different. Okay. So, the way that it works is you just say, all right, what is your zoom in image percentage? Okay. So we can go up two times. You'll see it's processing on device. All right. No real change. Go up three times. Now, again, it's zooming it here, but on screen, you're not seeing it there. So this is why I say, if you kind of want to see what it's doing to your image, at least for me, um, I, I recommend just sort of zooming up first. Now, one of the things you'll notice when I went to three X, I don't know if you'll notice actually. It got a little bit softer. Well, yeah, because this was a pretty small image and we're now zooming it three times. Now, it does have some post zoom sharpening. It also has enhanced face details. So I'm going to use both of those, but for this particular image, like, well, let's see. Let's, let's first sharpen it. Let's go to like 10. And by the way, this doesn't go to 100 here. And let's enhance face details. All right, and we can do a before and after here. So let's see. So here's before. All right, you can see just a little bit of contrast detail that's here, but not in the final one. Here's the after. Actually, now it looks pretty freaking awesome. What? That's incredible. Now I'm actually very impressed. <laughs> Crazy. Okay. So again, like it can surprise you. I don't know if I took this one up to three times before or not. We'll have to see. Okay. All right. So super zoom first. Now again, 60 shot. It's good. I could probably fix the color, but what about photo restoration? Now it's all about black and white, right? But I want to see what can it do to enhance the photo and enhance the face. So let's go ahead and turn this on. Processing, 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 doing its thing. Whoa. Before. Whoa. I mean, you know, again, wow. Pretty lady. Now, here again is where, you know, I might want to see sort of like, all right, do we want as much enhanced face? seems like we're getting a little bit of sort of softening of the hair there. So maybe if I take this down, let's go to like 35%. Okay. Let's actually see with like 15. Okay. Yeah. So I think we could do a little bit more because it was sort of a, you know, pretty common in a lot of the sort of those sixties. And I, I don't imagine this was taken with a great camera. Actually, I take that back. This may have been my, my dad's Pentax Spotmatic, which I have. There is kind of a nice shallow depth of field because you can see the blurry bushes back here. Um, so yeah, and, and he actually, he had some decent prime lenses, but his focus may not have, it's just sort of a softer, it's film, right? Softer film focus. So again, maybe if we take it like extreme, actually it doesn't look bad. <laughs> All right. I'm going to, I'm going to split the difference. Let's go like 65. And similarly here, you know, if we do photo enhancement, let's see like what 76 looks like. I'm going to be a little too contrasty. Yeah. I, I think that's maybe too much. Let's go to say like 35 ish. 
Okay, that looks slightly sort of more authentic. All right, let's take it back. Let's do like 55. Okay. Now, there's one thing in here that's really bothering me. Now, I could I could tackle this in a number of ways, right? So there's some of that. This was in a photo album and there was like some glue stuff on here and it has this kind of red haze. Some of this is actually photo artifacted, but some of it was like glue that somehow got matted in there. Now, there's different ways that we could fix this, but I happened to stumble upon this the other day and I thought, well, what would happen if I colorize this? Because the color's not right. And I'm really curious what the AI could do to make this look like, well, those bushes should be greener. You know, it kind of has that again. Old photos uh, tend to, one, fade over time, but have this sort of cast to them, depending upon the, uh, the print stock they were used. These are some of the things that we emulate with some of the color LUTs that I've shown in Premiere Pro, right? It's like, you know, Kodak, 3385, uh, uh, Fuji, 4510, or what, I'm missing up those numbers. So it's, you know, printed on, you know, shot on Kodak, printed on Fuji, whatever, and they all have these different characteristics. So let's see what Colorize does. Wow. Okay. Now, right away, though, it does seem slightly more artificial to me. We could come in and maybe tamp some of this down, maybe adjust some of it. But note that there are also profiles in here. So the first thing I was thinking like, oh, wow, well, yeah, it is retro. And I do kind of want a high contrast look. Let's see what that looks like. Wow. And I could tell you by seeing other pictures of my mom from this time period, this is actually pretty close. It's a little bit, it's a little bit too red. So again, one of the nice things we have, we've got a profile strength slider here. So let's take this down. Maybe just 5% more. Okay, and even maybe desat just a little. Before, after, and note why I'm doing this, you probably forgot. Why were we doing this? Well, remember there was all that red artifact glue fade in her hair. It's gone now. It's gone. Pretty sweet, right? And by the way, my grand this is my grandparents' house. It was white. I have no idea what this thing is here. <laughs> so the frilly fringe hanging. I have no idea what that is. But it was white. Those chairs were white. And there were these sort of bushes here. All right. Now, again, small thing. This part of her hair here kind of got, it looks a little pink. Now, one of the things that you can do is you also have the ability to make manual adjustments. So if I click on the hair here, this now pulls up a color picker. So I can come in here and by the way, and you can't zoom this window, at least I'm not aware of a way to do it. If anybody knows in the chat, you can let me know. Um, oh, Steve is saying, oh, Carol and Steve, it's an umbrella. Could be, yes. I should have thought of that. Oh, that looks even like a pole behind her, doesn't it? All right, well, <laughs> that's why you're here, friends. Um, so we can try and see, again, now it's also odd, we don't have a color picker because it would be great to like, you know, click on it on her hair right there. Maybe that's coming. I don't know, there's no color picker as far as I know. But let me try with this kind of brown. It may need to be even a little bit more yellow. I don't know, I'm, I'm guesstimating hate that word. Let's see. Oh, not bad. Look at that. All right. Took a little bit of the edge off. And it was kind of that, uh, that ombre dark. You can see she's got some of the 1969 sort of bleach front, but she had kind of the same in the back there. So again, just a small, subtle change. You can do multiples of those. And by the way, if you hover over, it'll tell you press Alt Option and drag to duplicate. So like if the other side needed that same treatment, Alt or Option click, drag to the new point, it'll take that same color, same thing, and apply it to the next location. There's also a strength slider here, right? So really, really cool. Again, let's output this to a new layer. And uh, I'm excited to send this to my mom. I think she's gonna freak out. She really like that. 
All right, I don't know why that's, uh, there we go. Oh, and it's super zoomed, right? Yeah, so get this back down to size here. Oh, okay, shoot, I just forgot. So here's a lesson for you. Because um, it's super zoomed, I should have made this a new document because in this case, right, it super zoomed this, but the original document size is still the original document size. So I would need to, I, now I, I, I actually haven't done that. So let's see here. If I increase the canvas size by 300%, this is a user error. So let me see if this fixes it now. All right, go back to this. Yes, okay. So, do you understand what just happened? So I super zoomed it, but that doesn't change your canvas size, okay? Super important. So what I should have done instead of creating a new layer, I, I could have, but I should have, I needed to resize the background. I could still resize it after the fact. All good, it's still all there, right? So again, if I turn this off now, here was our original in its original size, okay? So, and here's the super zoomed version. So it didn't, it didn't destructively crop it or anything, but that was, uh, I'm glad that happened because I did that to myself the other day and I forgot, oh, right. Yeah, um, it's super zooming the image, not the canvas size, all right? Is there a slider for the lipstick smudge? No, now there isn't, but again, okay, I could have, I could have tackled that, thank you, but that's where I could have gone in there and recolored to a more sort of, neutral skin tone. Now, in this case, this will be easy enough to fix here with a little bit of mask uh, or a brush um, here in Photoshop, okay? But you get the idea. All right, one last uh, uh, rest direct colorized restoration here, okay? <laughs> is me from the 80s, all right? So this is me in uh, uh, 1986-ish, I believe. Now again, um, pretty decent photo, the school photo. You can see my freckles there. Um, again, kind of, this was also sort of wallet size. Kind of has that slightly soft focus there. So, you know, um, we want to we wanna improve upon some of that. So let's go into neural filters. Okay. And as mentioned, it's not just for black and white. Let's go into photo restoration. Okay. Wow. I mean, just like instantly, like holy. Before, after. And now, I mean, this looks like a modern picture now, except with a 1988, 86 haircut. Um, all right. So good. Like, wow, it just, again, it's just sort of marvel. Look at, it even identified there's all this detail in my hair. Like really, really good. And then this was another one where I was like, well, the color is actually good. That is, that is what, by the way, that, that used to be my hair color. But let's see what Colorize does. All right, this one, now this is weird. This, this didn't do it, okay? Because again, now it gave me, it also gave me slightly just, lips are a little too pink there. Don't love it. Um, Maybe in this case, I just kind of back that saturation off, you know, Ooh, too much. Let it process. Yeah, nah. Let's see if I do uh, retro again. Oh no, ooh, yikes. Okay, no, 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 all right, forgot that, all right. So no colorize on this one, didn't, didn't do it, okay? But you get the idea, pretty amazing. Oh, and by the way, there are some like slight artifacts in here, so you know, we could possibly use some of this scratch reduction. Let's see if it gets rid of some of those little things in my hair and in the background there. There's a couple of scratches on the image when it was scanned. Got rid of those right away. Didn't get rid of the little things in my hair, that's okay. All right, but we have other ways in Photoshop to get rid of that, you know, obviously, and they're pretty small, okay? Now again, no, uh, no express change to this one here, so I've always got the two layers. Right, and I could easily toggle between them and make any of those changes. Okay, all right. 
Oliver, I love how the background texture is exactly the same as in my school photos, right? <laughs> I mean, again, if you went to school in the 80s, you know, you definitely, uh, you definitely have one of those. Okay. All right. So here, uh, this is another one. So this is an image of me and my sister on the beach in Santa Monica sometime in the 80s, probably around the same time as that photo, maybe a little bit, this is probably a year or two before that other photo. I could tell that because I didn't have a part yet. Got kind of the, uh, the beetle the beetle bowl cut going on here. So this is going to be a combo of two things. Now, one, this is, I almost remember that this was one of those like throwaway cameras, sort of instant throwaway, uh, what was it, 127 film? Anybody here remembers? Okay. Umicorn saying, yeah, it might have been the same in the Netherlands too, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's kind of actor face there. You are very sweet. What a cutie Carol says. Nice. Jan Tiller, didn't expect to see that. Nice. Lost Boys. Ah, <laughs> uh, good. I see everybody's saying, oh yeah, and the gray from her right arm. Yeah, I mean, again, like a lot of little tweaks, which as I showed you that color adjust, I just showed it to you the one time. You can do that multiple times. I, I'll show you another one where I've already done some of that. And then I'm gonna show you another little trick that I know you've seen before, but can use in this context. Um, okay, so this one we're gonna use a combo of neural and sky replace. So let's first start with the neural filter. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm changing minds now because we've had photo restoration for a while. I never thought to use it on color. And it really, it just, sometimes it just does a really nice job uh, on color images. So in this case, we're gonna use just a little bit of photo enhancement, okay? No scratches to deal with here, no noise reduction to deal with. Let's see if colorize does anything. It's a little muted, but that's that's actually okay. Let's see what it does. Now, see, again, sometimes the colorize just, it, it, it just kind of blows stuff out really strangely. Now in this case, this one's all right, I, th that's enough. Maybe I'll go into like the JPEG artifact removal for this one. Go into low processing. Cause there was some, I could see there was some like weird kind of banding artifact on there. Let's see what that looks like. Steve or Kodak X15 could have been. Let's see. For, after. Yeah, that's pretty good. Low strength JPEG artifact removal. Okay, all right. So, you know, again, we could play more with the color on this one. Sometimes I just do like auto color right here. That's actually fairly representative of what, I think that's actually closer, right? Again, this kind of has that and I forget if it was which Fuji or it could have been Kodak, X whichever print style kind of had that slightly more magenta cast. I, I just forget. I, at one point I used to know all of that. I kind of forget all of those. This is definitely a bit more neutral, a bit more natural, but something that, you know, and while by the way, the restoration actually brought out, oh look, there were, it was kind of a bluish sky and there were clouds. We're at the beach. It looks a little bit, you know, it's a little blown out. Again, there's no, there's no focus ring on these are like instant cameras. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just replace the sky? So I know you've all seen this. If you haven't, or you're not aware that we actually have made improvements to the machine learning and sky replacement. Let's go ahead and pull this up. Okay. A um, couple things. First and foremost, it's going to do a much better job if you used it even as recently as a year or two ago of identifying the mask of the sky and around objects. So without, you know, with very minimal artifacting. And again, you've got control over here of the fade edge, shift edge, brightness and temp of the sky adjustment. We've also got, you know, several dozen presets. So you can kind of sort of cycle through these to find what works. That one actually looks pretty cool. Probably somewhat representative of what it looked like there in Santa Monica. You know, something like this, Simpsons clouds. I mean, maybe if you didn't know, it, it, does, it looks a little fake. I mean, it looks good, but knowing Santa Monica, that doesn't look right. This one, maybe, um, again, based on some of the sort of muted sky from the original, and this one actually has a, a sort of a water scene here. This actually looks pretty good. I, could, I would buy this if I saw it. But I kind of like, I kind of like this one. I think, I think this one looks pretty good. Now, one of the things, one of the nice features in here is that you have this color adjustment slider. So what this is going to do is if you look at the, the the ground, the foreground here, it's going to reflect 
more of that sky light onto the ground there, right? Because again, if we were sort of taking this image, especially with like older film cameras, usually this works, this, this is really great for like, if you're doing sort of water shots, replacing sky, on, you know, taking their horizon, you know, something like that. But it actually works well here because being an older photo, it just looks too digitally fixed with such a blue sky and such green grass, right? The, the, like cheap film cameras wouldn't have exposed it quite like this. So by adding a little bit of color adjustment, we're actually adding a slightly cooler, bluer cast, but it just feels a little bit more realistic to me anyway. And then you've also got foreground lighting here. So you can kind of, you know, play around with this and adjust this a little bit. Also see you've got multiply and screen lighting modes, i.e. blending modes here. Really cool. Maybe we do a slight, you know, decrease of the fade edge there just a little bit, okay? And then same thing, we can output to a new layer, duplicate layer, etc. all right? And now you have all of your sky options layered here too, right? So really, really cool. So again, here was our, you know, original, and then here's our new one. So nice, okay? All right, so before we move on to Express, Okay, uh, let's see. Just reading some of these. <laughs> Blade Runner comments. Okay, um, I wanna show you one more thing. Now this one, we're not gonna work on it, but just to kind of show you a, a couple of techniques here. So once again, I mentioned, so this, this is my mom on the left. So this is 69. So that picture actually I think was 68. Actually that other picture, I think she was older. I think that was 1970. So this is the year before. So my mom was a model for the original beanbag chairs. This is she here on the left, replete with white go-go boots. And uh, I actually have this on a color slide. I think it's a four by six slide, which I had to scan with my slide scanner. And it was, I don't know the format, but the color was really it like had no color in it. I don't know. I, and I tried everything to fix it. Again, I've never done like man, well, I've done black and white manual processing a hundred years ago, but um, I, I, I didn't know how to quite restore this. So this was the best I could get it. And I mean, it looks pretty natural. Again, I was even asking my mom, like, do you remember? She goes, oh yeah, no, I was on a yellow one, white go-go boots, white phone, gold, uh, you know, gold edges of the phone here, you know, talking about her makeup and everything. And, uh, you know, so great. I mean, old photos are just amazing. Um, but I wanted to see what photo restoration could do to this. So once again, let's go into neural filters. All right. And by the way, what I love about this too, by the way, you see skin smoothing, it identifies faces immediately. So this is like, you know, great stuff here. Um, Umicorn saying those boots, boots must not have been comfortable. Yeah, hard to tell, right? I mean, they've got that, looks like a three inch heel or so. So probably not. <laughs> All right. So let's go first into photo restoration. Okay, it's gonna do its processing. Carol Pearl, she had the gams for it. Yeah, right? My almost tall one. Okay. All right. So again, like right away, holy cow, just, just fabulous. I mean, you can really see there's just some details on this woman's face here that you just didn't have before. Um, I think the sort of 50, 60 is pretty good. Now, let me just see if I take this up even more. Let me go to like 80%. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks slightly painted. You can actually see on her ring here, it's like it's over sharpening this a bit. So it does, it does start to get, but look at, if you ever look at 60s print ads, they did have this characteristic to them. So in the spirit of that, I could probably get away. Again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sort of, We'll, we'll split the balance here, split the difference and go to around 69. Ha ha, the year it was taken. Okay, so I'm first, I'm gonna go to, um, to new layer, okay? All right, just like we did before. Now, again, maybe you wanna do multiple passes on some of these things. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do something else here. And let's once again go into neural filters, all right? Now I wanted to try a colorize on this as well. So I'm going to go back to photo restore. Let's go to 69. 
go into colorize and let it finish first. By the way, that green bean bag we had, I don't know if she got it from the shoe, because I remember it having it as a kid. All right, so here's an example of where colorize really kind of missed the mark, right? It just didn't, it just went like way, way overboard. And there's all kinds of artifacts here, right? We have her fingers, which got some of that, this is like weird green cast, same here. Just like Grinch fingers going on there. Legs look okay, but then this part of her feet are, you know, reflecting and then somehow it turned that green thing, paint, red, orange, I don't know. But it did some amazing stuff, like on her face and hair. Again, the teeth got a bit of the, the uh, sort of red reflectivity. My mom's face looks amazing. <laughs> um, let's see how that sort of retro high contrast looks. Yeah, I mean, it, it just, it adds another layer of wow to it. Maybe it's a bit much, all right? So we can, again, you know, maybe we, maybe we back it off. Oh, whoops. Or we adjust the strength here. But this is an example of where, again, I would probably come in and start to retreat some of the color. So we know that this was green. So I'm gonna sort of click right here, go into our color palette. Okay, now it's kind of a, like, this color green, all right. All right, and turn it back green. Not exact, but you get the idea, all right. And similarly here, I would come into this. Now, by default, that's gonna go green. Of course, we don't want that green. We're gonna turn that one a different color. So with that selected, let's go in here and make this yellow. It's the wrong yellow. More of a, I believe that was a 60s mustard, <laughs> right? Okay, and we would do it sort of all around here, okay? Now I'm gonna output this to a, a new layer as well. Now, one of the things that, um, that I like about this is that, remember, we have the original underneath. So like in terms of maybe the hands, and some of these things. Maybe we wanna bring back some of the original color of the hands. Well, I can go ahead and add a layer mask to this. Let me zoom in for a second here. And if I go ahead and take my brush, shrink this down, I can now go back to this individual layer here and just start to paint these back in. Now, again, for all of you image people watching, you know this already. This is nothing new to you, okay? For my video folks watching, you know, sometimes with some of this neural stuff, these are the kind of things you might wanna do, all right? And again, I could kind of fix this all the way to the edge here. It's not gonna be perfect, you get the idea. Just gotta fix just these fingers because it's really, it's unsettling. <laughs> okay, kind of get our whole hand back in there. There we go. All right, and same thing here. Now, this, we'd have to do the whole arm, right? Because this got this red cast. But right away, you know, you can see how much better the hand looks. You know, same with my mom's hand over here. All right, come back over here, start painting in the fingers, okay? And similarly, we could probably just go ahead and paint in the phone because that should be white and gold. So again, this whole little green mess that it created, we could fix, you know, really, really easily with a layer mask. All right. I'm gonna resize that brush. Not being, not perfect, but just for the, the speed of the stream here. Okay, so this is just using the, using the layer below to help us. Oh, whoops. Okay, and of course, if I make that mistake, I can just flip this to white and now bring back Other 
back on. I mean, this is very small, but you can see really, you know, by the way, this is what you would have done manually before AI anyway, right? I mean, I remember Terry teaching me how to do this, I don't know, 10 years ago. I was like, yeah, well, if it really means something to you. All right, so now her hand looks normal, you know, her one hand looks normal. But anyway, you get the idea. So, you know, and I started to go through, this is one from yesterday, trying to retool some, I actually think I even got it better today. Yeah. So we need to recolor this red. You get the idea. All right. Pretty cool. All right. Nice. We've only got a few more minutes. I spent so much time on, uh, on this stuff that uh, we're going to have a little less time for video, but that's okay. All right. Let me switch over my screen just for a second here. And since I talked about it, let's just start with that one first. All right. So this is um, Adobe Express Animate from Audio. And I'm not exactly sure why, you know, well, who even asks why anymore in the modern age of doing things? Um, it's cool. So these are all, if you've never used Character Animator, if you're a Creative Cloud member, you have access to Character Animator if you're in the full plan. Um, and all of these are preset characters that we ship with. So what this allows you to do is to take a voice recording, or you can record dialogue directly. So notice there's a record button here. I'm going to choose an audio file that I created. You can pick a character, and then you can automatically animate that character with your voice. And it'll take your speech and animate that character's mouth with that speech. And it'll also sort of gesticulate with arms and things like that. So I'll be honest, I really love this, you know, if I'm looking, if, I, if I'm honest here, you know, in the spirit of, hey, nobody, I mean, I'm not going to choose this dude. I, do I, I, I mean, is that the closest looking to me? That's, I don't know. I like Yuko. <laughs> uh, let's go with this. <laughs> Only because I'm curious to see how this is going to animate. So I'm going to choose an audio file, which I have on my desktop. All right. And it's going to upload and process. It's processing the video. And you'll see it tells you your pu oh, it just, it just moved. I'm saying your pupil darts, your hands move. And all of this, it's doing sort of based on what you're saying and, and the pause and the, and the pacing of how you're talking is how it ultimately creates the animation. So should be kind of interesting. It'll take an MP3 or a WAV file, preferably a 16-bit stereo or mono, doesn't matter. All right. And let's take a look. Okay, first things first, I need carbs. Okay, first things first, I need carbs, and a lot of them, please. No, not from this place, from this place, where I found a European classic. Okay, I don't love that character. I'm going with Yuko. So notice I don't even have to re-upload. I just swapped the character. Now, partly why I chose this one too, that other one was kind of in a weird sort of pencil, -y, pencil, uh, the brush style I didn't love. So I didn't love the way the animation looked and the weight of some of the things. I, I mm, didn't love it. This character and many of the other preset characters, these are illustrator characters, I believe, watch how they animate differently. And the animation is, is really, really cool. All right. Dr. Squatch. Yeah. Big feats. I mean, both true, but you know, <laughs> yeah. All right. But this one, I don't know. I just love it. I love this il illustration style. Also, I said that line twice. So let's get rid of that. By the way, you can already see like the way that she moves, how the hair kind of bounces. So let's take a look. Okay. First things first, I need carbs and a lot of them, please. No, not from this place, from this place where I found a European classic. Okay. And then once you do that, you click download and it creates a nice little MP4 for you, which you can share on social or wherever. 
So again, I'll pull up that URL for you here. Here's where you can access this, adobe.ly slash 308CYEZ. And I think we, I'm 90% positive that is a, an uppercase O, not a zero. I think, right? If anyone can confirm in the, in the chat, let me know. Okay, <laughs> Valley Girl. I should have done a Valley Girl voiceover. That's an old voiceover from a video I did long ago. Okay, last thing I'm gonna show you. Look, we have lots of options here uh, in video quick actions. Trim, resize, uh, what's great about these, I've shown some of them before. If I just, I'm gonna pull up the sample for a second. Tons of presets. So again, you can go to any of these different locations. Oh, let me get rid of that, I'm sorry. Um, tons of preset locations, okay, for resizing. Uh, if you don't need to think about it, you also have just custom ones. You can also scale the video from within as you're adjusting for IGTV or stories or reels or whatever it is. Really, really useful. Um, but my favorite one is convert to GIF, okay. You drop in a video, it makes a GIF, you choose low, medium, high, and it just does its thing. But friends, we are out of time, so thank you so much. Great to see you. No stream next week. We'll be back the week after. So have a wonderful holiday if you're celebrating in the US and um, we will see you again next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.